Hello YouTube, this is How To with Matthew. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a population pyramid. In order to do this, you're going to need your information and you're going to need Microsoft Excel. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just going to open up a new uh, Excel document and enter all of my information that I need to portray on the graph. Okay, so once all your information is inserted right here, what you're going to do is you are going to select it. Pardon me. What you are going to do is you are going to hit, I'd like to enter a bar graph. You're going to enter a 2D bar graph, and it is going to be a stacked bar. Um, make sure it isn't anything else, because that will not work. It also will not work if it's the 100% stacked bar. It just needs to be the regular stacked bar. Now, th now that that is in there, you're going to notice that there are a lot of things wrong with this graph. First of all, it's not a pyramid, it's upside down, it's like an ice cream cone. What you need it to look like is a regular pyramid. Now, also, you're going to see that uh, the per 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 the um, you're going to notice that the scale for the ages is upside down and it's stuck in the middle. So the first thing we're going to do there is we're going to make sure we click on the numbers, otherwise it will not work. So once you click on the numbers, you're going to s say axes labels over here under format axes. You're going to click that and you are going to say low. Now that you'll notice it's over here on the left side. But you'll still notice that it needs to be, the 70 needs to be on the top and the 04 needs to be at the bottom so that it shows the ages climbing and it shows the population of those ages. Now, we're going to over up over here, we're going to see under axis options, we're going to see categories in reverse order. We're going to select that and that switches it over for us. Now what we're going to do is we're going to bring this over here down to the bottom. So we are going to position it high. Now that it is positioned high, it's at the bottom of the page. And uh, we're still missing a couple things. Um, but first of all, I would really like to uh, get rid of these grid lines back here. So what we're going to hit is we're going to hit no line. Now we're going to close that. And there we go. Um, actually, up here, there's um, there's a border. We're going to hit... You need a border for the graph, so we're going to hit solid line, and you're going to select black or whatever color you would like. That's just our aesthetics, and there you go. The next thing we need to do is we need to put in some titles. So, if you're using Microsoft Excel 2010 at the top, there should be chart tools, but that will only happen if you select the chart. So make sure you're clicked on the chart and you select layout. Now what you're going to do is you're going to set, select chart title. And we're going to say whichever one of the two you would like. I like, um, sorry, I prefer personally, and I'm sure some teachers would, to is if you were to do above the chart, because the center overlay title just it overlays it and it's kind of weird. So, now that you have your chart title, whoopsies, my bad, um, you're going to enter your title. So, in my case, it's Canada's population uh, in 1881. Sorry, I can't type today. Um, now that we're finished that, um, I know my teacher would like it underlined, so I'm just going to do that, control A and control U. Um, now that we have that, we still need the, uh, the subtitle for age, but what I would just like to do here is move the chart a little bit more out of the way. That way, if you just click on the chart and you drag, you'll be able to reposition it. Now that we have it repositioned, there's some room to write our titles. Now, what we're going to need is to is to um, make sure you're not selecting anything. You're going to hit Layout. You're going to hit Axes Titles. Now, you're going to hit the Primary Horizontal Axes Title. We're going to go Title Below Axis. Now, it's kind of in a weird spot, so I'm just going to... Um, whoopsies. 
we're going to hit axis these titles and you're going to start with your horizontal or whichever one you'd like title below axis now what we're going to do is we're going to drag it down to the bottom here where we can see it and so it's with what it is actually portraying and we're going to say percentage of population there we go and I'm gonna underline that and there we go there you have your title for your bottom little portion I'm just going to drag it a bit more to the middle uh, there we go now that we have that we still need our title over here so what we're going to do axis titles and this time we're changing to the vertical axis and we're going to say a vertic uh, horizontal title and uh, display axis title horizontally and resize the chart now we're going to enter our title which will be age sorry I wasn't selected there there age and um, yeah there we go now the one thing we're missing here is um, the box around the legend and stating what the legend is I mean anyone looking at it can see that it is a legend over here but you know uh, but better safe than sorry sometimes your teacher wants to uh, might want to take off marks in case so um, I'm just gonna put in a, a text box here and I'm going to say legend and underline that now I'm going to double click on the legend and over here underneath underneath border color it will give me a choice I am going to say solid line and it's black no transparency closed there we go now there is a box around my legend now what I'm just gonna do is I'm going to drag my legend sign down over top of it just to show that that is the legend there we go and uh, there you have it there's your population chart um, now if you're looking if you don't have a color printer you might want to change your shades um, so and also the sizes so if you don't like the aesthetics of that chart you're able to bring them a bit closer to um, sorry you can adjust the gap and uh, you know make the gap a little bit less make them all a little bit bigger um, you can uh, also what you can do is you can go into up over here while you're selected in that you can choose the shades colors whatever you would like now um, unfortunately Microsoft sometimes messed up their programming and it changed the format of my chart right see how it took out my text box around the, the writing and it also changed and put back my lines here so I'm just going to undo that and I'm going to do this manually so I'm going to double click on my chart I'm going to check fill and I'm going to choose I can choose a gradient fill I can choose a solid fill I can even choose a pattern fill and then I can select which one I would like so now that I've selected that and now I have my other one now when I print in black and white I'll be able to tell the two apart now that you're finished your chart it should look a little something like this now if you want to see what it's gonna look like when you print I mean this is very straightforward I mean I might sound like an idiot talking about but this but some people still don't know how to check what their work they just print and print you know save the environment because you know killing trees all wasting all that paper that's bad for the environment so what you want to do you're just gonna hit file and if you're using Microsoft 2007 or 2010 all you do is you hit print and then it brings you up a print preview now all you have to do is select your printer and uh, if that is how you look how you sorry if that is what it you would like it to look like then all you have to do is hit print and there you go thank you for watching my tutorial this is how to with Matthew and remember save the trees save the paper be good for the environment